Hi, I'm JP Sebastian from Expresso, all the way from South Africa. Colin Trevorrow, hi. Hello. Trevorrow, but it's okay. Oh, oh. rhymes with tomorrow. It's okay. It's, it's a thing. No one, only the British get it right. Only the British. What a reason, That's a wrap. <laughs> okay. Mr. Trevorrow, the director of Jurassic World Dominion. I got that right, at least. So, I've got to get rid of these. I've been carrying them around for the past couple of days since I've watched this. Two thumbs up. Oh, right on. Uh, excellent, man. Uh, the Spielbergian claws to full. And yet, you. You, you, you knocked it out the park. Uh, so, I have in my notes when I was in the cinema like a series of thank yous where I was just like, dust, thank you, snowfall, dirt. Dinosaurs in the background, out of focus. Talk to us about your rules. Your, your design of how do you make things immersive? Because a lot of the modern technology, there's such a temptation to show everything, but that's not how you make something immersive, is it? No, it isn't. It's a great observation, and it's something we, it was one of our rules, is to make sure that the dinosaurs were never too presentational in this film. They didn't know the camera was there. And I think oftentimes, like, there'll just be this moment where they'll pose and they'll roar right in the, in the exact way you need them to. And we do it once when it matters. But otherwise, you know, there's that one. Uh, but it was really, especially when we get into Malta and, and we change the, the cinematic language of it. You know, Steven Spielberg's films have a really elegant camera that glides. And once we get into that world, we were really handheld. And it feels like, it's almost like there's a documentary filmmaker trying to capture what's happening. Uh, and so those were, you know, subtle changes that hopefully worked their way into the movie feeling both familiar in some ways and then really different and hopefully really fresh. Uh, totally fresh. And so the other thing I wanted to ask you about is, and 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 this is, that, that's all the technical stuff. Now, I could talk about the action and the thrills and spills, but I want to talk about the feelies. I'm usually a Grinch when it comes to movies, and yet somehow I welled up twice watching this. Wow. How do you create, uh, I, I don't know if you expected that I want to happen. know when they were. I want to know when it was, but it's okay. It's okay. We got to keep going. No, 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 totally. I'll, I'll talk about it without spoilers. So uh, Chris Pratt reaching out uh, when he's herding after, the, like, the scene is not overly messianic, but it's also not like you didn't try, oh, how do we lighten this up? Where's the levity? How do we make this goofy? How do you, what, what is the magic of making something so moving? As well as, by the way, the ending sequence of the wildlife. I won't go into the details about that. Well, you know, I got to give Chris Pratt a lot of credit for that because in that moment, there's a look that he gives uh, that I thought was a really brilliant choice that you feel like he knows that, you know, life's going to be harder uh, for this animal. And, and, and they, he knows these animals have been displaced. Uh, and there's this sense of uh, it's, it's a combination of, of melancholy and then also control that he has to keep to, to make sure their, you know, their eyes stay locked to each other. And I, I just found it to be a... He, he does these things that, you know, Chris, as he's, as he's gotten older, uh, his presence on camera has changed. And I think there was a strength uh, to his performance in this movie uh, where he, it, it felt like a very, you know, classic movie star in the way you just knew what they were feeling by I'm looking at their, their eyes. Uh, and as far as to the moments at the end, you know, that really is, that's where this has all been building to. And, and hopefully yeah. uh, it's something that, you know, it's not a message. It's it's just you know an acknowledgement that if, if we're going to uh, if we're all going to survive uh, together, we have to find a way to, to coexist. Uh, yeah, and and aside from I mean that word is really important, but also uh, you have activist scientists in this movie. Good, good on you. It's nothing like sedentary. Like they are hands on trying to save the planet. Just quickly, two lines that I wrote down. There were actually three that were very similar, but two that stuck out for me. And speaking a bit about the message, the hopefulness at the end. Omar Sy's character says. Uh, the way the world is headed, uh, it's hard to look away. And then uh, the Wonder Wise's character uh, says, uh, it isn't enough to do nothing. What's the message? If you don't want to use a word that strong, but what's the feeling you want people to come away with in a movie that feels pretty hopeful by the end of it, in, in a quadruple apocalypse that we're going through right now as a planet? Yeah. Can you write all of the reviews? Is there a way we can arrange <laughs> that? Uh, I'm not going to write your last name, that's for sure. <laughs> I, uh, those are all uh, lines that are very important to me. Those happen to be lines that, that I wrote myself. And because I care very much that, you know, we've made a lot of movies about dinosaurs chomping people. And yet, uh, and that's awesome. And I love watching it. But, but why? What is our purpose and what is our reasoning? Yes. And so it's a movie that I think reflects uh, the way all of us were feeling at the time uh, in a world that, you know, is, is facing a tremendous amount of, of challenges challenges in the way that we interact with, with nature. Yes. Uh, so that's my time, sir. Interviews extinct. I have to say that absolutely that came across really strongly. 
was surprisingly moving to me, not just the thrills and spills, but that's there too. Everyone go watch Jurassic World Dominion. Colin Trevorrow, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Wow, hey, can you can you do all of his all of his <laughs> press junkets, all of his reviews? <coughs> or not? A great feather in your cap, fantastic yeah, interview. Yeah, I'm, I'm really proud of that. Um, but also, it felt like you got it, which for a director must be an amazing feeling to know that a critic on the other side of the world gets what he's trying to achieve. Yeah, those, those lines that I was talking about, they weren't necessarily delivered on like a huge staged moment where the, you know, the camera pauses like and then the, the yeah. violence come in and that type of thing and whatever. Like they were very casual, but still he was like, how did you get that that's what I was trying to say? And it's because I give it on. Um, yeah, man. So yeah, that's why. And, and I love the fact that it left you feeling good. And this isn't your normal lane that he, he plays in, which is a good sign. So this is a film that will make you feel better. Maybe it's just an opportunity to escape mm -hmm. for a couple of hours, go and enjoy some popcorn. It got 8 out of 10 from this man, and that is a massive endorsement. Jurassic World Dominion is finally here tomorrow.